past, uh, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years? Wow, Target's been around for a long time. Okay, well, Target was originally formed from a burnt-down church. That was the original sin, okay? Yes, Target was uh, formed from a, a church that burnt down, and uh, they built a small little uh, store, well, an actual large uh, uh, goods and services store that came out of that, and that's what evolved into the Target uh, Corporation. Um, they are really, really known for predatory mask branding. And if you don't know what that is, I'll give you a quick little refresher. So what these enormous stores usually typically do is they will offer a variety of products, but they'll also offer their own products. I'm sure you've seen President's Choice if you shop at like a Superstore. Uh, I'm sure you've seen things like a Western Family uh, or a No Name Brand. Uh, all of these brands happen to usually be the brand of the supermarket that they embody. And the entire point of the supermarket is that they bring you in where you can buy your regular products, but you can also buy a cheaper version of those products that the store readily makes. And because they make those, that's where the majority of their profits come from is selling you their own items directly. They get you in with the cheap products and the undercutting, and then they sell you their own products. Now, unlike other stores, Target goes really far and beyond to fool you into thinking that you're buying a whole bunch of products that actually are all Target brands. I will now show Archer you. Farms, Market Pantry, Simply Balanced, Sutton and Dodge, Embark, Room Essentials, Boots and Barkley, Morona, Mosimo Supply Co., Threshold Up and Up, Pillow Fort, Cat and Jack, Cloud Island, Project 62, Goodfellow and Co., A New Day, Joy Lab, Exhilaration, Universal Thread, and Hearth and Hand. All all of those, whoa, all of those are uh, Target brands. It's just all of those could just be called Target. But of course, they've got a really large development team, which goes uh, far and beyond to try and hide the fact that you're actually just buying nonstop Target products. Team staff discount to LGBTQ members in February 2012 years. Wait, what does this mean? Well, uh, guess what? Target, and I guess this has a little bit to do with their fundamentalist uh, religious roots, uh, for a long time did not let same-sex couples receive their employee discount. Uh, and by a long time, I meant up until February of 2012. That is 50 years. 50 years of Target existing, and they would not give team staff discounts to members of the LGBTQ community. Um, 2012 is not the start <laughs> of the revolution. <laughs> it's not when LGBTQ rights were suddenly to become in the forefront, all right? 2012 is eight years ago. So so that that, that, one's, that one's pretty incredible. I, like, when I learned that one, I was like, oh, shit, well, that's that's pretty fucked up. And it's, it's neat because Target actually has a, a very recent rebranding as kind of a woke brand. Uh, they're known as a woke brand. Now, they were actually very integral in doing two very key things. I don't give credit where credit is due. They allow women to breastfeed anywhere in the stores. And they're also one of the uh, few major chains that was very big on gender identity. You're allowed to identify as any gender you want when you walk into the store. You're also allowed to use one of their, uh, what is it, uh, agendered bathrooms, things of that nature. But that's all very, very recently. And that all has to do a lot with, I'm sure, some cover-up over... This. This was pretty shit. Um, Target has such an incredible forensics team in every single one of their stores. It is so astute. It is so detailed that they use it to train FBI and local law enforcement in forensics. And their forensics team is almost exclusively to prevent theft and stealing and actually trace down who's stealing from their stores. But it's so amazing. It's so good that that's what they use it for. They train local FBI and law enforcement in forensics. Uh, they are currently the leading gift card sales uh, in all of the United States. Now, there's enormous, and I'm talking enormous in the billions amount of uh, gift cards that are unused every year. Gift cards are a great sales tactic uh, for companies because you can sell them something that may or may not get used. If it doesn't get used, it expires. Most gift cards have an expiry date uh, typically within one year's time. So because of that, it's a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States selling faux gift cards. No one does it better than Target. How do they do it so well? They do it so well by rebranding all their Target products as uh, their gift cards as toys. Target makes glow-in-the-dark toys, uh, cassettes, batteries, cell phone covers. These are all gift cards, by the way. Um, but it's just their way of rebranding gift cards as consumer products so that you'll buy them and forget that you actually have a gift card. Instead, you have a Transformers toy. So, uh, neat. And, of course, you can forget all the rebranding of certain products. Um, Oh, yeah, we're going to get to the poultry. Don't worry. The 2011 chicken scandal. So, obviously, this is not uh, something that just 
is uh, part of Target, okay? Uh, the factory farming of uh, the United States and Canada, Canada's just as bad, if not worse, is nothing short of fucking egregious. It's horrible. It's it's barbaric. Even people here, like me, who try to eat vegetarian as much as possible, but I'm still weak. I still cave every now and then. When I smell the bacon, I have to have the bacon. Uh, even then, I will tell you that I think it's probably one of the most inhumane things that uh, human beings do. It's a genocide of uh, animal creatures on a daily basis. It's horrific. I don't need to tell everyone here. I'm sure most people here already know how bad it is. However, in 2011, uh, it was pretty widely produced that a lot of the poultry being bought by Target uh, was being bought from the worst sources, including those kind of cages where they actually cut off the chicken's beaks so they won't commit suicide, and they pump them full of all these uh, drugs so that they uh, don't also commit suicide, but the cages are so small that they can't move, and because you get stacked on the cages, who's ever on the top shits on every subsequent chicken underneath them, uh, kind of the human centipede of poultry. It's, it's, it's really fucked up. Um, so anyways, when this was all revealed to Target, uh, they said, okay, fine, uh, we're going to do a PR thing here. We say we will become cruelty-free, and they announced the uh, date of 2025. So this was in 2011. In 2011, they said, we cannot do it until 2025, but that's our goal. They also put no uh, mandates or requirements for them to achieve that. So uh, it could just be a PR stunt. Uh, we will find out in five years, because in the meantime, there's nothing they can do. I mean, people just need chicken, and they need to provide as much as possible. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that's just going to happen. Wage stagnation. So, in 2005, Target uh, had stagnated their wages for the entirety of their history. They had never bumped their wages far beyond uh, minimum wage. They, I believe, gave a 20-cent raise uh, at one point. But otherwise, wage stag stagnation was a huge problem with Target, as was union busting. You might notice that Targets have no unions, and that's because any single time a Target has tried to unionize or employees have tried to unionize, it has gotten crushed. Uh, they're very, very quick to run into scabs. Uh, Target has no problems doing that. And in fact, Target actually actually started getting around a lot of their employee, uh, pro uh, sorry, a lot of their uh, restrictions on employee uh, benefits by simply hiring contract workers. So Target has been doing this for a very long time. Now, make no mistake, Target in recent times has actually done a bit of a 180 on this. They become one of the few major corporations to switch to providing higher wages. So I believe at this time they're currently $12 an hour, which isn't a living wage, but still it is better than other uh, companies. So I will give them credit where credit is due. But by no means have they done well in that. Uh, their wages have stagnated. And I'm not done with the list, but I'm going to use this as a jumping point to switch over to our good friend, he. Yes, um, uh, you're looking at the current CEO of Target. Um, one thing I did want to tell you about uh, this individual. He made over $17 million in 2018. So the average worker's salary at that time was $11 an hour. That means they would have to work 176 years to earn his yearly wage. He makes about 1,300 times, 1,300, that's 1300, zero, zero, what his employees make. That's what the average worker at Target makes. And I know this is a debate I get into all the time with Destiny and Hark Dan and other people who are like, you have to understand the CEOs do a lot more work than the average worker, so they, sh they should be compensated. Even if you want to make that argument, which I would still think I could cut a few holes into, um, they don't do 1,300 times more work. They don't do 1,300 times more work than their average worker, all right? The person, uh, and by the way, I'm going to get into how shitty the treatment of their workers actually is. But yeah, that, that like, it's the same thing with Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, I think, has the record for the largest discrepancy between the work between himself and his employees. I still don't think he's making over 10,000 times more effort every year than his employees are, right? Which, again, with the wage stagnation, kind of makes it a little bit bad. Pregnancy tracking. What's that you say? Pregnancy tracking? That sounds strange. Hmm. Well, here's what I mean. And I'm going to use this guy again, just because it's nice to stack some more things on top of him. Blah. Uh, Target, does, uh, Target knows if you're pregnant, even if your family doesn't. A company employee tipped off the New York Times magazine in 2012 that data analytics obtained from shopping could be sorted to assess whether a shopper is pregnant, and unfortunately was being used, uh, using a record of transactions, things endemic to second trimester shopping, such as scented lotions, supplies like calcium and zinc, they were identified. The company could even make a reasonable estimate of when a customer was due and send them coupons tailored to their needs. So you think you're just shopping and uh, their algorithm is actually tracking whether or not you're pregnant and then all of a sudden in the mail you're starting to get little notices. Are you expecting? Hey, we got diapers on sale. Come to Target. Creepy? Yes, especially when the father of a teenager in Minneapolis or complained that his daughter was getting baby related coupons. Turns out he didn't know she was pregnant. 
Wow. But again, it's it's feel bad for feel bad for Target, all right? It's Target. They're the real victims in all this. Uh, even though all their products are completely insured, as was their store, so they're actually not really going to lose anything in what just happened. Uh, the Canada experiment, and this is where things get personal, because Target opened up in Canada, and I don't know if all y'all knew this, but it did. Mm. Resume Canada article. Oh yeah, here we go. So Target opens up in Canada, and you know how they do this? They buy out another company called Zellers. Zellers was a chain very similar to Target. I don't know if they're equally as shitty, but anyways, another shitty chain. Uh, the two of them exist. Zellers goes bankrupt. Target buys out Zellers. Target opens up in Canada. Now, Target, of course, empl uh, employs tens of thousands of people, uh, and they have this mandate. They have to open up every single store in Canada and replace every single Zellers store. Um, that's very, very foolish. You shouldn't actually ever operate business that way. You shouldn't operate business in the sense where you're like, I'm just going to fill in all the existing stores and see if that still works. You should probably open up a couple stores and expand from there. Anyways, that was the model they took uh, because of the supply chain, as well as the mismanagement of all these different sites, as well as the underpaying of their employees. Uh, they came out of, under a lot of heavy fire in Canada. Canada. They did not do well in Canada. They ended up going bankrupt in Canada. They lost $2.1 billion. And uh, remember those tens of thousands of employees I was just mentioning? All fired. Every single one of them. They're gone. And someone who knows people who directly worked for Zellers at the time, when Zellers went bankrupt, every single person who was older, including one of my friend's moms, lost their pension. Because that's one of the things when a company goes bankrupt, they don't have to pay their pensions out. So that's cool. When you're like in your 60s, you get to go back to work for the rest of your life. And I mean that literally for the rest of your life. And finally, uh, oh yes, the data breach. Um, if anyone forgot about this, I sure as hell did. Target CEO Greg Steinhafel resigns in the wake of a customer data breach. This was all the way back in, I want to say 2000, no, not 2008. Oh, 2013. Um, yes, so the breach was first disclosed by security blogger Brian Kerbs in December of 2013. Uh, basically, their online database of customers who were doing online shopping was breached. Uh, this resulted in 110 million shoppers having their personal data revealed to the world. That includes home addresses, uh, credit cards, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Target. Uh, Target's one of the baddies. Target, Target's like one of the baddie baddies. They're, they're, they're not a good company in any way, shape, or form. Anyone who's defending Target, anyone who's defending possessions, items over human beings, uh, has probably got the wrong side of the aisle. Hey friend, thanks for watching. Before we bombard you with all of our shameless links, we want you to bombard us. Do you have a worker co-op business or local union you'd like us to advertise at the end of our episode for free? So, if you'd like yours on your worker co-op, go down to wearesurfs.com. And while you're there, join the Discord, because it's filled with righteous guys, gals, and empals. Finally, come check us out on Twitch Live five days a week by going to twitch.tv slash the surf TV. Yeah. To our lords, Ricky Pilgrim, I'm Raft, Tomospone, Nine Tails Cosmic Fox, Hans Josephin, and Corpse Harvester, we bow meekly for your pleasure. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Byte, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Clement Chetskoff, Cooper Pilot, aka The Man with Large Balls, Political Puppy, Nick Davis, Ali May, and Alan R., we salute you. And to our many merchants and farmers, you have our undying loyalty.